we're, we're going, going on vacation. This is my sister Stephanie, the authorized Disney vacation planner. And this is my sister Adrian, sort of a Disney novice. We are just a few weeks away from taking my son Lincoln on his first Disney vacation and the whole family is coming. We're getting really excited and so we wanted to share with you how easy it can be to plan the perfect Disney vacation. To start things off, we're going to break down all of your resort choices. <laughs> You really can go to Disney World and have a fantastic, magical time, and there are ways that you can do it the right way. You can do Disney a lot of different ways, and the right way depends on your family makeup and what you want to get out of this trip. Why don't we start at the beginning and go through value, moderate, and work our way up into the deluxe. So this is her area of expertise, I'll let you talk. Alright, what do you want to know about Disney World? The value resorts are fantastic. If you love to go to Disney, you like to go frequently, you want to stay on property and get all of those on property perks. When you stay on property at a Disney Value Resort, you can take advantage of Disney's Magical Express transportation, which takes you from the airport directly to your hotel. They will even pick up your bags for you at the airport. You'd never have to stop at the baggage carousel. You just go start the magic as soon as you get to the airport. Some of the other perks are when you stay on property, you can take advantage of the dining plans. Um, that's an optional feature if you like to have everything paid for in advance. Um, the dining plans are a great way to do that. And there's various different options which we'll talk about later on. Another perk of staying in an on-property resort is the fast passes. Some people don't realize, first of all, that fast passes at Disney World are included in the cost of your ticket. But when you stay at a Disney property resort and you have a resort package with them, you are able to book your fast passes 60 days in advance rather than just 30 days if you're staying off property somewhere else. So another perk of staying on property with Disney World is that you can take advantage of extra magic hours, which basically means that one or more of the theme parks will stay open an hour later, or they'll open an hour earlier in the morning, and those hours are reserved just for people who are staying on property and who have that magic band to scan and get in the gates. So if you're not staying at a Disney property or resort, you can't come in until an hour later or you have to leave an hour earlier than those Disney property resort guests. Do you get a fast a magic band no matter it comes with your ticket, not because it you're comes staying with on property your resort stay. Ah, so if I don't stay on property, I don't get a cool magic band? That is correct. And how do those people get fast passes? Paper ticket. Card plastic ticket. Oh, interesting. So you get these cute little bands that you can carry with you and mix and match with your outfits if you stay on property. Yes. Huh, I thought that was just part of going to Disney World. Now, Did see, I learned something even today. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so you decide you want to go. You say, okay, I'm going to stay on property because I want all those extra perks and things that make the stay a little more valuable. So you start to look and you say, I don't want to pay very much money and I'm going to go, what are my value options? There are three all-star resorts, all-star music, all-star movies, and all-star sports. Those three are located pretty close to each other. They actually share buses, so sometimes the waits for those buses can get kind of long, especially at the very beginning or the very end of the day, because they do usually share buses. There's also um, Disney's Pop Century Resort, which um, is another one of the value properties, but it does not share buses, so that can be a good plus for the Pop Century. And the newest Disney Value Resort is the Art of Animation Resort, which if you are a larger family um, or you're traveling with, you know, a lot of people, you can fit up to six guests in the family suites at the Art of Animation Resort. Cool. So all those options, you're, do you have any transportation choices that are not buses, not those? No. And they, all the dining there is all quick service or buffet The style. dining locations that are actually at those value resorts are all quick service locations. There aren't any um, table service restaurants at the value resorts. So all right. we're getting ready to go on our family Disney vacation in just about 26 days. Yes. So we're getting excited. Yes. We have the countdown on our phone. Find an app that you can, it'll count down the days for you. I have a cute one that has a little picture of the castle in the background so you can know exactly how many days until you're going and count it down with everybody. It's exciting. Um, so we've gone through the value options. Next we're going to go through the moderates, which are ones that we um, considered for this trip as well. So let's talk about those. Are there any overarching like benefits of those versus? Moderate resorts are typically located a little closer to the parks, meaning it's going to cut down on your transportation time. 
Um, some of the just general amenities of the resort itself, even the room, um, you know, toiletries and just little things like that, you'll notice sort of a quality bump when you go from value to moderate. And then there's also going to be more features at the resort itself. So where the value resorts did not have table service dining, the moderate resorts do. There might only be one choice, but there's table service and there's quick service available at the moderate resorts. Um, the moderate resorts, some of them, not all, but some of them do feature additional transportation options as well, so you're not relegated to just the bus. Um, for example, uh, Port Orleans Riverside and Port Orleans French Quarter, which are sister resorts but they are separate, um, they share amenities, so you can actually use the pool at both resorts if you want to. They also offer boat transportation from the resort directly to Disney Springs, which is kind of a nice feature so you don't have to waste time waiting in line for a bus. You can just hop on the boat and it's also a beautiful ride on the way to Disney Springs. The other moderate resorts right now are Disney's Coronado Springs and Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Those are both currently under construction and that's some pretty significant construction at um, Caribbean Beach Resort. It's a lot of refurbishment and remodel. So as soon as those are finished, that should be a really cool resort to stay at. And then at Coronado Springs, they are adding a whole tower. So they're building on to the resort itself. And eventually, there's some exciting things happening at Disney World in 2019. And Coronado Springs update is one of those. So eventually there will be um, cable car transportation from Coronado Springs to some of the Epcot area resorts and I believe to Epcot itself. So that's pretty impressive. So talk about the themes. Port Orleans Riverside, Port Orleans French Quarter are themed like New Orleans. New Orleans. Yes. So okay. Port Orleans French Quarter is a Mardi Gras theme. There's a jazz club you can go to and listen to live music. Um, and it's very much, you know, it's sort of those greens and purples and yellows um, are the theming throughout that section of that resort. Then when you go down the street to Port Orleans Riverside, you're talking more like stately plantation homes. Um, there is actually the Sasagula River that goes right through the middle of the property. And um, there's a, a steamboat restaurant. The, the resort buildings themselves have the big white columns in the front of them and fountains and beautiful landscaping so it's just sort of two different feels of the same new orleans vibe awesome so then talk about the other ones that you were just talking about coronado springs is so coronado springs is sort of that mayan or aztec vibe um, big pyramid in the middle of the pool area with a water slide um, you can see the three caballeros there. They are featured um, inside the main lobby area. So that's that resort. And, and then there is okay. Caribbean Beach Resort. So Caribbean Beach Resort is divided up into different islands. So you can stay in Jamaica or you can stay in Aruba. Um, and there are, you know, beachfront hammocks that you can go hang out in at nighttime. There, um, the one, I guess the one thing to note about the Caribbean Beach Resort is that they are two-story buildings. All of the rooms are in two-story buildings, so you can have a room on the first floor or the second floor, but there are no elevators in those buildings. So that's an important note if you aren't able to take the stairs or you just don't want to take the stairs. Caribbean Beach Resort might not be the one for you. The other moderate resort that I sometimes don't even think of as a moderate resort is the cabins at Fort Wilderness. Um, and I don't I sometimes don't think about them as a moderate resort because they actually have some extra features that a typical moderate resort doesn't. So I sometimes forget and lump it into the deluxe category, but the cabins at Fort Wilderness actually are private single standing cabins and they have a separate bedroom area and a living and dining area. The bedroom features a queen size bed and a set of bunk beds. So a family of four could sleep comfortably in there. There's also a pull-out sofa in the living area. I believe it's a double-sized bed. So you can sleep six people in that particular cabin. And then it also comes with like a full kitchen and a dining area and even like a patio with a grill outside. So that's kind of a great feature or a great option if you are a family wanting to go and maybe you don't want to be on a dining plan, but you like to cook some of your meals while you're there. You've got that kitchen at your disposal. Or to keep your leftovers in the fridge or something like that, mm -hmm. so you've got a few snack options too. So the cabins at Fort Wilderness, mm -hmm. is that also with a campground? Yes, there is a campground section of that particular resort as well. So both tent camping and RV camping. 
Cool, so we've done value, moderate, and the next step up would be deluxe. What are the qualities that you get with a deluxe? So when you're staying at a deluxe resort, I think for me that's the most similar to, you know, the Hiltons or the Marriott's of the world in that you are, you walk into a kind of a grand lobby when you arrive, you check in, you have interior entrances to your actual room um, so that you can stay out of the elements if you need to in Florida sometimes. Um, and then also there's, again, sort of a quality bump and an amenities bump. When you go to a deluxe resort, you have usually multiple table service restaurant options and they are very good. You also have, you will also have a, a quick service or maybe even multiple quick service options for you there as well. Um, and then additional transportation options come with that deluxe resort category. So that might range from uh, there will always be buses, but then you might also have boat transportation, which actually takes you directly to parks rather than to just Disney Springs. Um, or you might have the monorail, or you might even be within walking distance to some of the parks themselves, which can be a very nice feature if you're trying to experience the most magic and not the most time on a bus. Yeah. You can get to your things quicker, you can spend less time in line, you can not have to leave as early to get to the parks as, as quickly as you want. So yeah, that sounds like a good a good perk. So transportation, dining options, just a higher quality within the features of the resort itself, swimming pools, splash pads, yeah, water slides, yeah. Probably multiple mm -hmm. pools in most op in most cases. So okay, so why don't we go through quickly kind of all of your choices if you're thinking, okay, deluxe is what I'm thinking. I want all those options. So the deluxe resorts with the lowest price tag are going to be Old Key West and Saratoga Springs. They are located nearest to Disney Springs. So there, there are additional transportation options which will get you to and from Disney Springs, but not necessarily directly to the parks. You'll take a bus to the parks. Disney Springs is like a shopping, dining area, what used to be called downtown, downtown Disney. Disney. Um, and then we go to like the Magic Kingdom area. So our deluxe resorts at the Magic Kingdom area are almost all on the monorail loop. The first one um, is, that's not on the monorail loop, so again comes with the lower price tag, is Disney's Wilderness Lodge. That is a resort and spa. There are, there's boat transportation that can take you from your resort directly to the Magic Kingdom and also to some of the surrounding resorts. So then the resorts that are on the monorail loop um, right at the Magic Kingdom would be Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, the Polynesian, and the Contemporary Resort, which also includes Bay Lake Towers. Although not technically on the monorail loop, there is a Skyway walkway that will take you from Bay Lake Towers into the Contemporary where you can catch the monorail. So tell me about each of those. Grand Floridian. The Grand Floridian is the one you've seen in all the pictures. Bright white building, bright red roof. It is elegant. It's a little fancier than your typical resort. And there's, there's a spa. Mm -hmm. There's lots of dining. Lots of dining options. In fact, the most exclusive dining option that exists at Disney World is located at the Grand Floridian, and that's called Victoria and Albert's. We'll talk more about that one when we talk the dining plan. Yes. Stay tuned. <laughs> this might be a good time to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube <laughs> channel for more information the next time we update you on all these cool things that are happening in Disney and when we go on our trip in just 26 <laughs> days. So Grand Floridian, super fancy, super beautiful, lots of things to do there. If you want a day away from the park, Sounds like a good place to just hang out for the day. And Lots get. of character dining options there as well. So even if you're not staying there, but you want to go check it out, there's some good character dining meals that you can take part in at that resort as well. Cool. Grand Floridian, the Polynesian. Polynesian is where you want to be if you like Moana and all of all things Hawaiian. So the Polynesian has that Polynesian vibe. The Polynesian Resort does also feature the overwater bungalows so if you are a large group and you're looking to celebrate something really special those are pretty amazing so it's going on my to-do list I absolutely disney bucket list item for sure the contemporary so then there is the contemporary resort which again you've seen lots of pictures of i'm sure if you've ever looked at anything disney world related the monorail this goes through the hotel 
Yes, so there's two different sort of areas that you can stay in at the Contemporary Resort. You can stay in the tower itself, which is the part that the monorail goes right through, or you can stay in the separate garden wing. If you're looking for a deluxe experience with a slightly lower price tag, but it's closer to the monorail, then the Contemporary Garden Wing is a good option. Very much walking distance to the Magic Kingdom from yes. the Contemporary. Would you say that's the case for any of the other Magic Kingdom resorts? You certainly could walk from the Grand Floridian. It's probably about a mile because you're going around the lake. So the closest would be the Contemporary. Yes, the absolute closest resort to the Magic Kingdom is the Contemporary. And of course at the Contemporary and at all of these monorail resorts there are theme park view rooms which can be a really fun option if you want to watch the fireworks from the privacy of your own balcony. Which is another feature of deluxe resorts. They do typically feature a balcony whereas the moderates and the value resorts do not. So if you are traveling with little ones who go to bed a lot earlier than you want to, having that balcony option for the adults would be a really good idea. Cool. Awesome. So that is everything around the Magic Kingdom, correct? All the deluxe resorts around the Magic Kingdom? Well, no. Oh. The last resort um, that I haven't mentioned yet that is nearby the Magic Kingdom is the Bay Lake Towers. So this is the newest deluxe resort. It's actually the newest resort in all of Disney World. Um, and it is just sort of located right behind the Contemporary Resort. So again, that super easy walking distance to the Magic Kingdom. It is an all villa resort, so that means that booking it, the process is a little bit different, but when you contact your Disney travel agent, they will help you with all of that. All of those resorts offer um, monorail transportation, but they also offer boat transportation. So again, this is a really good way to cut down on the time that you're spending on transportation or waiting on transportation is to stay at one of these deluxe resorts that are located close to one of the parks. Cool. Awesome. So those are near the Magic Kingdom. Let's go and talk about what's considered Epcot area resorts. Yes. So again, the closest resort to any Disney park, but in this case that park happens to be Epcot, is Disney's Beach Club and then right next door the Yacht Club. On the other side of the lake there is the Boardwalk Resort. All three of those resorts are within walking distance to the International Gateway entrance at Epcot. That means that you're coming in the back side near all of the what's it called, the International Showcase, the World Showcase. World Showcase in the back. So that means that you're coming in a different entrance than everyone who's coming in from the parking lot from the main entrance. Cuts down on your time spent waiting in line to check your tickets, cuts down on the time that you spend waiting in line to have somebody check your bag, and you can jump right in. You come in to sort of right in between the UK Pavilion and the France Pavilion. I did learn about this the last time I was on my Disney vacation and I felt like it was a secret passageway that nobody knew about. It was far less crowded and you could take the little boat and it was just kind of a cute different way to get in and out of the parks. So those three resorts that I mentioned, Beach Club, Yacht Club, and Boardwalk, those are all within an easy walk of that International Gateway entrance at Epcot. They're also within walking distance of Hollywood Studios. It's a little bit longer walk, but you definitely can walk there within, I'd say, 15 or 20 minutes. Um, in addition to being able to walk to those parks, there is boat transportation for you to both of those parks as well. So maybe you want to walk to the park in the morning, and then after you've been walking around the parks all day, you can hop on that boat and just sail right back to your doorstep. Sounds like an awesome way to do it. So beach club, yacht club, boardwalk. All of those resorts also offer the villa option. So there's a standard room with, you know, the two queen beds or two queen beds and a day bed, that sort of setup. Or there's a villa option, which you can do a studio villa, a one bedroom villa, or a two bedroom villa, depending on the size of your party or the comfort level you are looking for. And those are all themed, just nautical. Is that kind of the story there. Well, the Beach Club obviously is all about the beach, Cape Cod sort of theming. The Yacht Club is more nautical about boats The Yacht and Club ships. is more nautical, yes. Cool. And then what is... What and then the boardwalk, the boardwalk is like Atlantic City. So there's actually a boardwalk that you go out and there's shops that you can look at, there's dining, there's a bakery, there's a couple of bars, there's a great vibe in that area. There's also at the other end of the boardwalk a a dance hall and a dueling piano bar. So if you're over 21, you're looking to, you know, have some exciting night out options close by, that's a, an awesome area to stay in. 
Now I will note that there are two other resorts that are in this area as well. They don't quite get all the same perks that the Disney resorts I've mentioned do, but Walt Disney World Swan and Walt Disney World Dolphin are also located in this area, but again we'll talk more about those later on. Next would be the Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom Lodge is the last deluxe that we haven't mentioned yet. This one is not within walking distance of the Animal Kingdom, but it is pretty cool. So this is a total African vibe when you walk in. There's just this massive lobby area. There's a huge fire pit right in the middle of the lobby that you can go and sit by and enjoy. Really great dining at the Animal Kingdom Lodge. In fact, my favorite restaurant in all of Disney World and maybe even in all of the world is located at the Animal Kingdom Lodge. So if you are into interesting foods, different foods, if you're not afraid to try new things, the best restaurant that I've ever been to at Disney World for sure is called Jico the Cooking Place. And it's right inside that main lobby area of the Animal Kingdom Lodge. It is delicious. I highly recommend. We have a reservation there. She told us that we had to get one, so we're going. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'd like to eat there every night of my Disney trip. <laughs> awesome. So we've gone through all of the resorts, yeah? All of the resorts, yeah. So, so. we have actually opted to do a split stay which means we're gonna start our vacation at one resort and then part way through we're gonna move over to another one. So we are trying out Bay Lake Towers in a two bedroom villa for this trip, as well as then moving over to the beach club in also a two bedroom villa there so that we are within walking distance to our two favorite parks the whole time. The cool thing that I didn't realize that she said it wouldn't be a hassle to switch between is that they will, if you pack up your stuff in the morning, they will move your luggage while you're at the parks during the day and you'll just come home to a new resort, mm -hmm. your stuff will be there and you won't have had to do a bunch of work and transportation and doing all of that yes. while you're there. If you need some information about booking, how do they get in touch with you? And we'll put that information in the information section below. Absolutely. So my, my best tip for anybody looking to plan a Disney vacation is to make sure that you plan with a travel agent. Um, in case you're not aware, travel agents do not cost you one extra penny. There are some that charge a planning fee. I do not. So if you contact me, you can check out my information down below. My, I'll put my email address, my website, my Facebook page, all of that down there. Um, definitely follow me, like me on Facebook. Shoot me an email if you're interested in planning a Disney vacation and I will be glad to help you. So when you use a Disney travel agent, you're not charged any extra fees, so the price that you're going to pay if you pay Disney directly is exactly the same price that you're going to pay if you book with me, but I'm going to be there for you every single step of the way. So I'm going to help you make those decisions and help you think through what are your really your priorities for your stay and get you the best option that you, that you probably don't even know exists. So I can help you with your fast passes, I can help you with dining reservations, I can help you decide you know, which park should you visit each day of your trip. Um, all of those little planning details that can become very overwhelming if you're trying to do it all by yourself, and especially if you've never been before. I'm here to help with that. Well, thanks so. for you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys will subscribe and tune in as we post more and more videos to keep you updated on our upcoming Disney trip, as well as all the Disney information tips and tricks that we may come up with along the way. So thanks for watching. Bye.